Of course, I lose my voice for the 1,000 subscriber special. Enjoy this all episode. Welcome back to Lizard of Doom. I am Max. If you haven't watched the video before, I don't normally sound like this. We've hit 1,000 subscribers. That's the first real milestone on YouTube for a subscriber count. Thank you all for being a part of that. I couldn't have got here without you. This has gone a lot better so far than I thought. And if this is your first video, subscribe and like and do all the YouTube things. So this is quite an exciting video for me. I have never, ever had a 3D printed miniature. I've been in the hobby for a decade. All the time on YouTube you see, oh yeah, we just 3D print this file. I don't, I don't own one. Most of you don't own one. And maybe I will in the future, but for now, I'm still an everyman. And, <clears throat> and I don't have a 3D printer, but my friend do does, but my friend does. And I've printed out something very exciting for me, at least. I hope it's exciting to you, that I'm gonna be using as a Nurgle Count Saz army. Let me know in the comments if you'd play against it as a Nurgle Count Saz army. I know some people are touchy about what counts. In my mind, if it's on the right size base and it's about the right size, no harm. Demons in the lore can come in all shapes and sizes. We're just used to them looking like plague bearers, blood letters, the other ones. I'm ready to go. Let's have a look what we got here. I absolutely love this miniature. Here we have all the sections of the snail that I've printed out. My friend's got quite a small miniatures 3D printer, so it had to be cut up into these sections. And the head looks nice and gross, ready for a Nurgle demon. After a little bit of sanding and filing and stuff, I feel the most egregious kind of holes in it. These little splits along the snail might be so noticeable now, but when I'm finished with this, you're not gonna notice them. I've got kind of a shambling mound thing in my head, if you know what that is. It's a D&D monster that's got kind of plants, or it is plants. It's a big lump of forest stuff. And that's what I've got in my mind to finish the snail off like at the end. There was one crack that I thought I couldn't cover with some greenery at the end. So I made sure to fill that one in and replace this little doohickey at the end of his little tendril there because that had broken off either in printing or in transit. And look at that snail -ussy. The base is actually the same size as a great unclean one base. Isn't that a coincidence? I think that I'm going to call this snail Snotigus because I'm going to be using it as a counts as Ferotigus. This is going to be a big old wizard Nurgle snail that brings the acid rain. The actual demon model is a little bit taller, so I'm going to be tilting it back a little bit on a cool rock. This is a bit of insulation foam from my neighbor's loft conversion he gave me his offcuts. I'm going to be putting it on the base and cutting it to kind of like a pride rock feel. I found if I get my hobby saw, and just push it into the foam and then pop a bit. It gives these nice kind of textures that look like natural rock textures rather than trying to actually mold it myself. This is how I'm going to be creating the textures on this thing. After some mayhem and mess, I had my pride rock ready for the snail to go on top of. I'm going to glue this, not with super glue, because this is quite a light breakable foam and I'm worried that super glue will bond to the exterior and then just the foam will snap off. So I'm going to sit the snail on top like this and I actually used this glue that I used last year when I fixed my roof to glue some tiles in place. But unfortunately I was right at the end so I had to get creative. I noticed there was some glue left in the tip nozzle bit so I got that off and stuck a screwdriver in there to try and get any residue out that I could. This uh, Nurgle build is off to a great gooey start. Disgusting. This stuff can stick roof tiles to roof tiles and keep them in place. So I was pretty sure this would keep my foam in place on this base. A little bit of pressure then I let it set for a while. Perfect angle for the snail, lovely. Now I had the same concerns about attaching the snail to the top of this foam, that the foam would just break off. So I had to think outside the box on how I was gonna connect this snail. I've never ever seen a model screwed to its base before, but I thought this might be a good idea. Screw through the base and into the bottom of the snail. Drilling into this model with a hobby drill wasn't really gonna take a screw. So my only other option was a power drill. 
This is a little bit daunting, especially on a resin model because they're quite brittle. I didn't know whether this was just gonna shatter the model or go well. I used a carpentry drill bit to be quite gentle with it and hope for the best. No going back now. Has anyone else ever screwed a miniature to its base? I don't know if this is extreme measures, but I just wanted to really make sure that this was not going anywhere. I tightened it until I heard a little click, which might have been something inside breaking or the resin cracking, and then uh, left it there. Yeah, pretty good, happy with that. I then added some things for scale some skeletons to show people who had wandered into the garden and died, and some nurglings to show other little inhabitants and creatures that lived in Papa, Gir Papa Girdle's Nargen, Papa Nurgle's garden. The model of the snail is big, but out of context in just a photo or a video, you don't quite get a sense of how big this thing is. This is great unclean one big, and these little guys on the base add a bit of character to the environment. Some cheeky little chappies playing around, enjoying their life in Nurgle's garden. I then gave it a base coat of trench brown from Colourforge. I am xenophiling this with white scar after it. I wanted the undertone to be a nice warm brown colour to start getting those sickly tones of Nurgle through. After this, I did some research and picked out some colours. Saigor Brown being one of the contrast paints. Kind of colour matching to my references in the background there. Paint two of three is snake bite leather. This is kind of a yellowy browny colour and then Nasdreg Yellow. This is a very yellowy colour, obviously, but it's still a dirty colour. I wanted this to be a gross, dirty snail. The reason I would like to do a snail like this is because I used to hunt snails like this in my grandfather's garden. That's very applicable to Grandfather Nurgle and his garden. Me and my granddad would go out there and look under leaves and find these snails and then race them across windows much to my grandmother's chagrin, leaving streaky snail marks across the clean glass. The pattern seemed relatively easy to copy. These snails are kind of banded across their shell and then the dark brown colour goes kind of diagonally long ways across the top of the shell. These colours are very close to each other, but I feel that they're different enough that you get a sense of a pattern and it looks more natural. I dry brush some Tyrant Skull over it at this step to kind of bring up the edges and separate them from the depths and shadows on the top of the snail shell and on the top of the spiral coils as well. I did this before the darker brown colour because I really wanted those dark brown areas to be realistic like the snails in my reference photos. Those patches are very dark. Next I got the Saigor brown and some contrast medium. I did a 50-50 mix with this on a dry palette, also known as a small plate, because it is quite dark and although the snails in the pictures have a kind of blackish brown colour to them, I didn't want to go that dark because I know I'm going to be dirtying this down a bit later on and I didn't want to completely black out these areas. I left a little secret mark of Nurgle, which is these three circles, on the snail for people to notice later in amongst all the grime. As a little easter egg, as it's a creature of Nurgle's garden. Mm -hmm. 
Now you've had some real life lore about me hunting snails with my grandfather, it's time for some lizard lore. Snotagus was not always a giant snail. A garden snail from the mortal realms, carried back to Nurgle's garden on the back of a big demon who didn't even know they were there. Snotagus then explored the garden, taking in all the wonders, all the plants and plagues of Nurgle. One day Snotagus drank from a pool of water, a stagnant disease plague ridden pool. Immediately infected with Nurgle's love, Snotagus began to grow. Snotagus grew rapidly over the course of a few years, becoming the size of a horse and cart, to now where they stand taller than a house. Snotagus is now named thusly as the slime trail they produce is particularly thick and potent. Anything caught in its slime is melted to its bones. Snotagus also doesn't enjoy plants as much as they used to. They prefer to eat the flesh of mortals, dissolved in its acidy slime, as the plants in Nurgle's garden are also precious to Nurgle. Originally seen as a pest by Nurgle's gardeners, Snotagus has now become a regular fixture helping control the real pest problem. Pesky mortals that wander where they shouldn't, like a ladybird controlling the greenfly population. The weather seems to follow Snotagus. Acid rain follows them. It stings the flesh of mortals, but makes Snotagus so happy living in such damp, putrid conditions. Snotagus still has some growth left in them yet. They have not reached their maximum size, if there even is a maximum size. One day, maybe Snotagus could devour whole worlds in their wake. Snotagus is a happy snail, and loves their Papa Nurgle. And Papa Nurgle loves all his creations, equally. After the markings were relatively pleasing to me, I used some Gut Ripper Flesh Contrast mixed with Rattling Grime to get the body a nice grey snail colour, but also keep it a bit greeny nurgly. I don't think I need to highlight this skin. The model's got lovely texture on it, and it's gone in the flaps, folds, and creases nicely. The dirty rattling grime really bringing down the green. I think I can leave it there. I'm gonna dirty it up a bit later, and that will add more depth to the shadows. The next step is to paint in these fungi and mushrooms growing around the base of the shell. I had a kind of fairy tale look in mind, but not the classic red toadstools. I want some grim, disgusting, dirty green toadstools to go with the Nurgle theme. And some classic layering with some light flesh colours for the underside of the mushrooms and some foresty green colours for the tops. Then I did those classic fairy tale white dots on top as well with the light flesh colours. Yeah, nice. Gross and fairy taley. Lovely for Papa Nurgle's garden. Now, to make it a little bit more gross, I didn't want to do the eyes like snail eyes. I wanted to do them human eyes. Something a bit uncomfortable to make eye contact with. Something that looks like it's looking at you. Some kind of bloodshot, disgusting eyes. To achieve this, I first coated them in Two Thin Coats white paint, I think it's White Star. White Scar, White Star, very close, Duncan. So I had a nice base to work with when I was gonna use some contrast on top. Using Mantis Warrior green contrast paint, I gave them some bright green irises and dotted a little bit of black in the middle for the peoples. Around the edges, I used Gullyman's, Gullyman's, Gullyman's Flesh contrast paint to give them that kind of bloodshot look. I didn't wanna make it too red. I felt this was a nice mix, kind of like an old drinker's eyes, sad and uncomfortable to look at. Yeah, I like this. It looks a little derpy head on, but maybe it doesn't even see with those eyes. These big stalks on top have eyes on them that look like they're definitely looking in a direction. Very uncomfortable, very human, very gross. Yeah, I like this. Now this snail lives in Nurgle's garden. It ain't dirty enough, is it? I need to make it a little bit more grim, and the best way for grim and grim dark 
It's true grime. Everyone knows it by now. It's become a hobby staple. And time to slap it on this snail. <clears throat> snail. AKA Interactive Streaking Grime. Let's get going. I'm not spraying it on this time like I did to the Chaos Knights. If you haven't watched that series, that's what's got this channel to this point it is now. I'll put the link in the corner. And now I'm painting it on this time instead. The reason I sprayed it with a perfume atomizer on my nights was to get a nice splashy, dirty feel like they've been stomping around in muck. This snail lives in muck. This is a thick coating of muck. I made sure I got it absolutely everywhere to give it that nurgly, dirty feel. It's always a bit daunting painting this stuff all over a model that you're kind of happy with and finished with, but it is easy to strip back. I'd say you're never really going to get it all off, but you can get it to a point you're happy with, even if you've gone a bit hard with it. I carefully avoided the eyes because I didn't want to grimdark the eyes. I feel like it'd be blinking these big gross snail eyes into its gooey sockets and cleaning the dirt off them as it does. Talking of cleaning the dirt off, I poured it back with some AK thinner and some cotton buds. It's important you use the right type of thinner. I know you can use other products, not just the actual branded one, but I don't like to risk it. I'll pay a little bit more for something I know is gonna definitely work. I did a fair bit of cleaning and went through a fair few cotton buds to strip the stuff back off the model and it started to look grim, gross, dirty and nurgly. Just the way I want it. I then had a little crack at the base. Some classic layering, building up these little green nurglings and skelly bobs just to add a little bit of character to the base. And some nice dry brushing to bring on this rock. I did respray the base in a matte black from Colour Forge because that was an easier way to do the rock rather than leave it brown and white. As this was the biggest thing on the base, that was the simplest thing to do really. I really like the natural rock textures I got by just popping bits of foam off. Once I was happy with where these little chaps were, I moved on to basing the base. Basing the base, make base, base, base. The substrate I was adding to the base is the baked compost that I bought from a store that I used on my Chaos Nights. And I thought it would make a nice forest floor as well as a jungle floor. I imagine Nurgle's garden more as a forest than a jungle. I know it would probably be hot and sweaty and gross, but I don't know. I just always had this foresty feeling in my head rather than, you know, tropical. I applied a layer of PVA glue, then coated it all over with a baked compost, tapping off the excess. All the bigger bits look like roots and leaf litter, and the small earthen bits look like the forest floor. I then screwed the model back to its base. When I tried to do this with just my two hands, the base kept kind of spinning as I was trying to screw, so I strained a little bit harder and popped out an extra third hand. There we go, hold on to that third hand. All right, just screw that in tight. This actually pulled the snail down into the foam rock a little bit, making it look more realistic. All right, thank you, third hand. Talking of roots, time for my favorite fake trees, actual trees. I glued them on in little places, making it look like this little nurgling was hiding behind a tree and holding onto it with his hand. I used Gorilla Glue Gel Glue because I find this is the best kind of stick for this kind of work. There we go. Nice. Next is the greenery. We're going with some thick grass tufts from Gamer Grass. And after that, I've got some lichens. These are using like model railway stuff more than military wargaming. But I thought this would give some nice variance to the colour of the plants on the base. I've got a dark green, light green, and orange to break things up a little bit. So this model isn't just too green. You've got to tear it up like this as if you put it on in big clumps like they do for miniature railways. It doesn't really look like bushes, it still looks like lichen. Whereas if you tear it up like this, it looks like different little forest floor plants like ferns and different foresty flora. I tried to mix up the placements as well to give the base a nice even spread of colour. The next product is something that I'm excited about. Army Painter Battlefield's Poison Ivy. I don't even know if they make this anymore, but this is what I'm going to be covering my cracks with. There's lots of little ivy leaves on this weird kind of hair, fishing liney material. You can tear off strips and glue them to things. It's meant for buildings, I think, and like foresty scenes. But you can stick it to big monsters if you want them to be like shambling mounds, that's fine. When you tear off these strips, it looks like natural ivy, the way it would grow up a building or a tree or something. I tore the whole thing up into strips because I was pretty sure I was gonna use it all. And I did use most of it in the end. I began super gluing this over the cracks initially, 
to cover the bits I wanted to make sure I covered. After I'd covered all the bits that needed covering, I started then using it to blend those bits because it was laid out in kind of a grid fashion with the rest of the model, making the whole ivy seem like it grown on top of this snail naturally. I like to think this snail is so slow moving the plants can easily grow on it. There we go, Snotticus looking pretty with their gross human eyes. Shambling mound look complete, but that rock is looking a bit bare to me with all this greenery around it. We'll come back and tackle that a little bit later. For now we've got a hobby classic, Yoohoo glue as gross dribbly slime. You can mix this with blood effect paint to make a nice blood splash for your weapons or fangs of your creatures. You can use it for saliva and phlegm in things mouths. You can use it for the acidic snot of a giant snail. I had a problem with it initially as it started doing what you want it to do on the model, where it would form these kind of like stringy tendrils that look like realistic goo. Easy way to do this, get a paper clip, get a lump of glue straight on it, tap it where you want it, then try and pinch it off somewhere. Maybe, maybe not pinch it off. Don't say pinch it off, Max. This stuff unfortunately does the long stringy bits as you try and get it off whatever you've put it on to then put it on the model. But you can see it works. This is actually the first time I've ever done this effect. I own this tube of Yoohoo glue to glue things. I've used it to glue things in the past. But after about 10 minutes of messing around, you can become really good at this. It's a really easy technique. Try it, have a little go. Yoohoo glue's cheap, a couple of quid, and it gives a nice effect. This mixed with some gloss varnish on the snail ussy underneath gave it a nice shine, gross feel. I also did some bits trailing out the back where it'd be moving forwards and going up this pride rock. The side of the rock now needs a little bit more interest to it. I wanted to make it look like there was moss growing on there. So I've got this autumn flock and spring flock. And I thought those colors mix well with the plants that were already on the base. So I'd use a little bit of it. It's quite spongy little flock. And I thought it would make nice moss on this rock. I mixed it together and I think I was correct. It does make nice moss on this rock. I used my fingers and when things got a little too delicate, I got the tweezers back out and put them in the places where I wanted and gave it a little bit of a tidy up. Usually I like the kind of natural it lands where it lands look, but I want to make sure this was on the rock and not just scattered about. I want to talk to you. Yeah, you. You right there. Thank you, a thousand subscribers. I can't believe over a thousand people subscribe to my bollocks, really. Not my bollocks, my bollocks, the bollocks I make. I am now in a race with Social Blade. If you do not know what Social Blade is, it's a really useful tool for content creators like myself. YouTube give reasonable metrics on the back end. They're not updated very well. Social Blade does something YouTube metrics don't do. It does predictions. You can put anyone's YouTube channel, go and go and have a look. Socialblade.com, socialblade.com. You can put anyone's YouTube channel in. Me, Squidmar, PewDiePie, Mr. Beast, your mum. <laughs> um. <laughs> and look at the predictions of what they're gonna be doing numbers wise for the next five years. So far, we've smashed Social Blade. They didn't predict I was gonna get a thousand subscribers for another four months. We've smashed it. The next subscriber milestone on there is 2,500. They predict I'll get that on the 10th of August. On the release of this video, that is 89 days. Can we do that? I don't know, but it's a good goal to aim for. So send this to everyone, your, your friends, your dad, your sister, your dog, not your mum, she already knows me, trust me. Um, <laughs> why do I keep doing mum jokes? This is meant to be a thousand subscribers special and I'm just rinsing people's mums. Let's have a look at some reveal shots of the snail. This big old snail-o and that juicy snail -ussy. <laughs> No, not normal reveal shots. This is the thousand subscriber special. I actually went outside and touched grass.
So there we have Snotagus in all their glory, out in the wild in Nurgle's garden. Sincerely, thank you all for watching my content. I can't believe this could actually be something. Remember to like, leave a little comment. Let me know if you want to see more snaily content when we hit the next subscriber milestone. Thank you all for watching. Remember, it's not a pile of shame, it's a pile of future fun.